it's that time again. Um, we're gonna go through the 24.4 release roundup video. Um, this is a pretty exciting release. Now, I wouldn't say it's action packed like some of the previous releases, but this particular release um, is going to start and kick off uh, in a very important phase in terms of uh, modernizing uh, the Ancestral platform. Check this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Enable Ecoverse vision only because we have done a mountain of work um, between 24.3 and now 24.4 um, around the foundational steps of this Enable Ecoverse. So I really want to kind of take you through it. Um, now this content will contain forward-looking statements reg regarding future product plans and development efforts. What that basically means is I'm not Mike Adler. I'm not the EVP of our product team. I don't get to decide when, you know, features and functionality get released from Enable. So anything I talk about, um, just know that product plans and priorities do change. <clears throat> now let's talk a little bit about your ecosystem and what that really means is, and let me just move my face out of the way here, um, is... Um, you have a series of technologies, whether from Enable, from other vendors, but you have technologies that you're using across your customers. Um, you're wanting things like interoperable systems, you know, you know, something that's data centric, where systems can talk to each other, making them both adaptable and scalable. Now, the important part here is when you have those technologies, whether from Enable or from anybody else, you effectively have this ecosystem concept right now i'm going to put myself back down here now what we're going to be talking about when we talk about ecosystem and enable is kind of bridging these two themes together right because we are underway on a series of modernizations right and what we're going to do is we're going to put that together within this enable ecoverse now what is this right well this is the future of what enable is going to be okay so first and foremost we want to talk about like our three pillars let me just use my little laser pointer here so we've got three pillars unify management better known as rmm whether that's insight or n central we have rmms unified manager with a bunch of functionality inside it. then we have cyber, cyber security we've got things like edr mdr we're going to be having vulnerability management, mail protection, identity protection, those kinds of things. And of, co of course, we, we cannot forget co right? Now, through all of these things, you, our customer, are using um, or managing, I should say, physical cloud entities, right? You're managing users. You have a, a hybrid workforce to deal with. The, the, the important part here is when you take all of that complexity, right? Enable really wants to be at the forefront of assisting our partners um, in terms of that management. Now, obviously, we know that automation is everything. It's where I spend most of my time, you know, just making sure that our partners can utilize things like our unified management. Um, around things like patch management or automation manager or using code via PowerShell. So seamless workflow management throughout this ecosystem. Now, what you see here is very something, you know, very enable centric, we'll call it. Now, the important part here is we're taking these enable solutions, exposing those APIs and also working with third party solutions. And if you're not familiar with our top program, hop onto our website and uh, able.com and familiarize yourself with tap, because that is where all of our third party vendors, our partners, um, uh, will reside. And again, completing these integrations, right? It's not just going to be this closed system from enable. It's going to be a, a working towards a better environment for all of our partners. Okay. So I really want to kind of take you through what that enable ecoverse really kind of is going to be imagined. Now let's get to kind of 24.4, right? Now this isn't what you're going to get in 24.4, but this is the foundation that has now been laid in 24.4. We are going to be able to deliver something very similar to this. This is effectively a mock-up. Um, but what we have are things like custom filtering, 
you use filtering in Central. You have to go into another area of the product. You have to build filters. You have to put some logic together. And it, it's, it's powerful. However, it's not dynamic. So we're going to be building filters, um, like fil filter creation on the fly. We're going to be able to build in more widgets and dashboards to give you the proper insights so that when you walk in in the morning, you've got something to focus on. Customer level, level page filters, right? So being able to drill in and, and see things very, very quickly. Obviously, the seamless trans, uh, transition to your current experience. If you want to go back to the all device view, for example, you're going to be able to do that. Switch between, right? And obviously, when you can do things like customizable columns, when you want to pull in different data points within the, within the system and see those in columns to get a, a better representation of what you need to do, as an L1 or an L3, or someone who's in, you know, managing the, the customer, you want to be able to customize these views. And you're going to be able to do so using um, this new all assets view, or sure, sorry, assets view. Okay. Now, just below that, you're going to be able to take actions, right? So just like you have the tasks ribbon in the all device view, you are also going to be able to do those quick actions directly through the actions menu. Now, I'm very excited about this because I know our partners have been, you know, asking for UI updates uh, for a long time. And I think this looks really, really slick. Okay. Now, that's kind of it. But I want to kind of give you the representation of what end central is really going to be longer term, right? Now, we have new agents coming, data collection, modernization, stability from the end central server to the end central technician and then everything else in between now again you know this is going to be a series of steps uh, a journey and that first journey is going to be that all assets view okay so that's it for me i one other thing i did want to talk about i'm working with my colleague nicole on our developer experience I'm really excited about this. This is going to be like scripting, automation, APIs, uh, and working with third-party uh, um, uh, vendors to be able to have a really awesome experience within this and enable, enable Ecoverse. If you know me well enough, uh, you know I love talking about APIs. Okay, and uh, 24.4 is no different. Okay, so let me get this underway. Okay, so first things first. Um, for yeah. um, some additions and some additional functionality around the Incentral APIs, which you can access at, you know, your fully qualified domain name slash API dash explore. You can see that here. This is my training server. You can use my server if you want. It's public. So uh, we added a select parameter um, under the uh, device list endpoint to allow for querying for specific set of devices using RSQL. Um, and you can do so via this particular GitHub. Uh, so it's github.com and then slash J I Rutka slash RSQL dash parser. And again, all of this information is in the release notes, so you don't have to remember it. Um, we also added, pardon me. <coughs> We also added API appliance task, task ID. So we've now added that. That will allow for getting more details around service monitoring tasks. For an example, it would be, you'd be able to get more details around agent last check-in time uh, from the agent uh, status monitoring task. For example, uh, we've added a new, uh, new scope to API slash device dash filters which is great because now you can retrieve the entire list of all of the filters and use that. Um, and then my favorite, last but not least, because I know uh, a lot of people have been asking for this, is now we have exposed reg tokens via API. So API slash org dash units slash, I should say in brackets, uh, org unit, um, or we can call those squiggly brackets if you want, um, slash reg dash token. So we've added that in. So you're going to be able to programmatically grab uh, those those uh, reg tokens that you may need. Okay. Um, that's it for 24.4 uh, 
on the API service, but I can assure you more cool things are coming. Okay, so this is a good time to talk about direct data access. Um, I'm sure you're very familiar that we have Power BI baked directly into and central in the form yeah. of what we call analytics. This is where you can access all of the dashboards and all of the views that you need to effectively report on in and central. Well, um, I know Ingrid, our product manager, um, is, has been hard at work bringing more and more value um, into analytics for you. But one of the other things that is happening at Enable is that we're exposing all of this data. Okay, so all the data that we're collecting here uh, in the front of NN Central, we can actually collect here. Now, there are uh, five, or no, is it seven new uh, data models? Two, four, six, seven. Thank you. Uh, there are seven new data models around device incident, network error and packet loss, uh, OS reboot and uptime history, OS reboot and uptime latest. These are fact tables. Uh, we'll get into dimension and fact tables probably in a boot camp, or I believe my colleague Joe Furla has done a boot camp on direct data access in at using uh, the data within Snowflake. We also have uh, fact tables for hardware physical storage, hardware video controller, so video card, and also remote, remote execution and automation engine. And all of those are right here. I really want to just to point out really quickly that you can get at this data fairly quickly, right? So you can see what columns are here, right? And then you can get into here. I go into device last logged on, and then it's all right here, right? So you can see all of it, okay? Now, the important part here is the data is here. We just need to kind of give you the access to unlock it. Okay, so if you are interested in finding it more uh, more about, um, you know, direct data access, the data retention piece um, for obviously containing data much, much longer than we can within the analytics portion, uh, which is uh, by default, it's, it's 90 days. But if this is where you can actually retain much of this data much, much longer. Anyways, if you are interested, please contact your PSM and, and please ask about it. Okay, last but not least, bug fixes. Uh, bug fixes aren't uh, always that sexy. However, I did want to include them because there are around uh, 20 uh, bug fixes for and central, uh, and probably another, I think we're looking another eight for patch management, which is also in central, but uh, we've obviously identified ecosystem and patch management. I really wanted to bring your attention because we have spent a considerable amount of time making the performance and functionality of in the central be much more reliable and i really wanted to kind of point that out um when it comes to you know you know being able to use in central and making it efficient um, and making that functionality as efficient as possible as well so i just want to point that out so you've got roughly around 28 i didn't count them but are roughly around 28 uh, bug fixes included in this release as well um that's it for me um that's the release for 24.4 um, what I do recommend is check out the release notes. Um, you'll see that link there. Um, please check it out, read through it. You can see all of the interesting stuff that we're doing around 24.4. Um, you will have in order to unlock this Ecoverse experience or what we're starting with is the all assets view. Uh, you will need enable SSO or what we call enable login. Um, so you will need to enable that first. Um, and then. Um, obviously we'll be able to, uh, because this is a cloud service, we're going to be able to iterate and make in those improvements. So as long as you're on 24.4, you will see that, that future state, um, in the obviously months of uh, month, months ahead. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I know this video is a little bit longer than I normally do, but I did want to kind of touch on some different aspects in this particular release video. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed them. My name is Jason Murphy one of the head nerds at Enable. See you again soon.